Hello everyone. This week we are stepping away from the paint world a little bit and we're going to do a project in my own home. Um, but first I want to give you a little bit of background on our home story. So my husband and I bought a lot back in 2016, a vacant lot of five acres of land in California. And we decided we wanted to build our own home with no knowledge whatsoever of what it took to build our own home. So we designed our home and we built it from the ground up. Um, we did use a contractor who built our home to a shell, basically to drywall, and then we moved in at that point. And we've done everything since then ourselves. So if you imagine moving into a completely vacant house, we didn't have any flooring, we had no light fixtures, we had no tile, bathtubs, sinks, um, faucets, paint wasn't done. At the time we moved in, we didn't have garage doors and our roof wasn't even on. So we've gone through quite a journey building our own home. And what's that that's meant for us is we had to prioritize projects in the order that they needed to be done. So of course, bathrooms and the kitchen came first. Um, and now we're getting to decorative projects. And one of those is this right behind me, which is our fireplace wall. So because it was built to drywall, this has been drywalled for two years now. Um, since we moved in and been living here and we finally are to the point where we can start doing some decorative projects around the house. So this came up on our list as something we look at every day and wanted to finally finish it off. I've not been able to hang stockings on a fireplace for the two years we've been here. Um, we knew this was part of the process. This was our dream home to build, um, build a home for just our family and we knew this was going to be part of the process. I don't think I knew at the beginning um, how involved it would be and how much time it would truly take for us to do these finishes. Um, but I'm really proud as everyone we get to. Um, my husband Sean took this project on. It turned out beautifully as you can see behind me. So that's the story of our home and it will help make sense a little bit more of how we are getting to the point of finally getting to install some stone on our fireplace. So let's go ahead and get started on this project. I'm really excited to share this project with you guys. Finally something done in my own home that you guys get to see through completed. So we started off with the drywall on the fireplace wall. We also hung some shiplap behind our television wall behind there so you can kind of see the evolution of the fireplace. We had always intended for this wall to eventually have stone on it. Um, we did just leave the drywall painted for that first couple years and that was fine, it just masked the problem. So we started off this remodel by um, first covering the fireplace wall in quarter inch hardy backer, which is a cement board that's going to add strength to the wall and give the tile something to adhere to. The painted drywall is just not strong enough to carry the weight of the stone on top of it, and then the painted finish doesn't give it anything to attach to. Hardy backer cement board comes in four by eight foot sheets, and we just cut them to size for the walls of the fireplace. Once we had all the pieces cut, we're just screwing it into the framework of the fireplace wall using hardy backer screws. You're going to notice through this project that we worked backwards a lot and did things a little bit out of order. One of those things is if you look off to the right hand side of this, we have a media cabinet that butts up to the edge of the fireplace wall. We weren't sure how we wanted the edge of the hearth to work so that those cabinet doors could still open. So we didn't build the hearth first because we needed to think on that a little bit. We did just decide the height we wanted the hearth at and we left that part of the project blank for now. We basically wanted a hearth that was about seat size that would give you a place you could set down wood or anything when you're loading the fireplace. Um, and then we also knew we wanted to build in a little kindling box into the hearth as well. Once the hardy backer is up, we need to go through and tape all the seam lines where the pieces of hardy backer meet up with each other. We're just using a mesh tape. You apply it over your screw lines and then you can cut it using a straight edge blade. The mesh tape just covers the seams and adds a little bit of strength to help prevent cracking on those seams. Here are some photos of getting that hardy backer all the way up this wall. We have 12 foot ceilings in this room, so it took quite a bit of ladder work to get up high. Don't forget our boxer, Ginger. She's always on site to help. The next step is to cover the taped seams with some mud. We're just using a layer of thin set over the top of the tape to help hold it together. The thin set is just scraped on over top of the mesh tape using a straight blade. This is the same sort of preparation you'd use if you were laying a tile. Um, it's very similar to drywall, the process of drywalling, except you use a little bit different materials for underneath the tile. While we're on the topic of tile, let me talk a little bit about the material we chose to face the fireplace with. 
Because it's taken us a couple of years to get to this project, we had plenty of time to look at materials. We ended up choosing a six inch by 24 inch stacked ledger stone panel. This one's made by Rocky Ridge and we purchased it at Floor and Decor. We chose the stacked ledger stone panels over an individual stacked stone look because of the ease of application. This applied really easily um, like a tile. We also loved that there was no gaps in the stacking that would require us to mortar or anything in between. It was a nice clean look once it's all put together. This stacked stone came in a bunch of different colors. In fact, you'll find that we actually used it in another color on the outside of our house as well. This room is fairly low light, so what we found is that the colors in the stone look very much different online and in the store than they did when we actually brought them home into our room. We wanted colors that added a little bit of warmth to the room, but were still neutral. When we were building the house, I tried to choose neutrals for the finishes that were set in place, and then I can decorate with colorful accents around that, but my basic finishes are fairly neutral. I also chose this particular stone because it has a lot of shades of beige and gray in it, so I could really go any which way with my decorating style. It also pulled out the shades of beige and gray that are in our flooring. So now you know my mindset when I was choosing the stone. You can see that we've got the hardy backer all installed and taped up the wall. Here's the fun part. Now you guys get to watch my husband, Sean, cut the stone. He's using a traditional tile saw made by Rigid. The tile saw just has a diamond edge masonry blade on it that cuts right through the stone. It's about three quarters inch thick on each piece. Sean is wearing gloves through this because working with thin set and the wetness of the saw, it tends to dry out your hands really quickly. We chose to wrap the corners of the angled wall of our fireplace using a mitered edge on each corner. So what he's doing here is he's going to cut it to the pr appropriate length and then he turns the saw and is going to cut a miter on it as well. The saw has a gauge on it to tell you exactly where to lock it in for a 45 degree angle. This probably goes without saying, but the most important part of cutting pieces like this is to watch your finger placement. It is really extremely easy to lose a finger in something like this. This is a wet saw, meaning that it incorporates water to keep dust down when you're cutting the stone. We've used this exact saw for tile all throughout our house and we have porcelain tile, natural stone, and ceramic and it works great on all of them. Sean's learned to do this just from experience. We've remodeled a few homes but it's been a long road to get here to where he has the confidence and the knowledge to be able to do applications like this. I think it just takes a lot of practice to learn how to cut your stone. When we purchased, we did purchase enough to have 10% waste, but we ended up having very, very little waste. The cuts were very precise on just about everything. All that means is we will have a few boxes to return after this project is done. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that we save some in case we have any pieces ever get damaged in the future so we have an exact match. Um, but other than probably keeping one box on hand, we'll return all the rest of it. We did that with each of our tile choices throughout the house, just kept a few extra pieces or scraps, um, and we'll keep those as a stash for the house just in case we ever need them for repairs in the future. Now he's bringing the pieces inside and you can see how they match up to the edge of the fireplace and then also to the edge of the cabinet as well. It's going to look like a built-in when we're done. Our fireplace has screws on the face of it and we were able to pull the screws out and just add a little spacer in behind the face. This allowed the face of the fireplace to meet up to the depth of the stone once we added it. Once again, 12 foot ceilings and this stone had to go all the way up floor to ceiling. Here's another spot where you're gonna notice we worked a little bit out of order. The other part of this project we were uncertain about when we started was what our mantle was going to be. I had ordered several different designs to try to choose from, but until they came in, we just placed a ledger board to run the stone up and we measured what dimension we would want our mantle to hang at and then started um, placing the stone up from there. If you're doing this in the proper order, I'd recommend putting in your hearth and putting in your mantle and then just running the stone straight up from there without these stopping points that we had in the middle of our project. But it did work out in the end. So the two by four that you see attached to the wall is just a ledger board. This gave us the height of the mantle and then it kept our line running straight from that point on up. This is a great view to see how nice those mitered corners look on the sides of the fireplace. 
Once we got everything, the stone and running up the wall, we ended up having a stopping point when we had to stop and wait for some of our mantle choices to come in. Thankfully, they shipped fairly quickly and we got them all pretty quick and were able to make that decision, but it did take probably about two weeks to get them all and then finalize the choice that we actually wanted to use. So let's talk a little bit about choosing a mantle. Again, I had plenty of time to look at multiple options and play with different ideas in my head about what type of mantle we wanted. Initially, when we first started the house, I bought this beautiful piece of old lumber, a 12 by 12 that we were going to cut down and use as a mantle. But as we started looking at it, it was going to be much bigger of a job to try to brace the 12 by 12 piece of solid wood lumber. I also went on Etsy and I looked at a bunch of different custom made mantles. We also toyed with the idea of using some old lumber that was on our building site from a cottage that used to exist on the site. In the end, we decided that it was just easier to buy a pre-made mantle. It seemed that there were a lot of different um, options out there, but there was one main mantle company that made pre-made mantles that just hang on a cleat on the back, and they're made by Pearl Mantles. So I ordered quite a few. Home Depot and Lowe's both have them online. Amazon also carries them. Those three options had different styles and colors in stock, so I did end up ordering from all three, and then we just easily returned the ones that we chose not to use. I did notice that one of the biggest complaints in reviews was the colors looked different online than they were in person, so I felt more comfortable ordering them and seeing the color in my house and choosing from there. The one that we ended up keeping came from Amazon. It's called the Cherokee. The color is called Fontana. It's made by Pearl Mantles. It measures um, 10 inches deep by 9 inches high, and then we did choose to add the corbels, but those are completely optional. We did have helpers all along the way. We made sure to involve the kids and let them try their hand at all the different steps in this process. The mantle that we chose just hangs by a cleat. So we attached the cleat into the studs of the wall and then hung the mantle on there. And then we just screwed from the top the mantle into the cleat itself so that it's nice and sturdy. Having our mantle in place just allowed us to finally cut the stone around the size of the mantle and fit it perfectly. This was a more in-depth process that did involve a lot of cuts for the stone. Now we can start building the hearth. We did have to finally decide on what shape we wanted for the hearth. We taped off some lines on the floor using painter's tape and then practiced opening the door to the cabinet just to see how it would work. This helped us figure out the depth that we wanted and the shape of it as well. The hearth is constructed of two by fours. Um, we attached it to the fireplace wall, but not to the floor. You'll notice that our flooring, our tile flooring okay, already so runs up to the fireplace out the wall. Hearth and so we just let that carry fours. on underneath the hearth. Um, we did want to leave a box here we wanted just a small for tinder box in the hearth that we stuff. could um, so this put our kindling in. in two by and so we just framed that out in two by twos instead there. of the two by fours. Um, this just gave us more interior space for a little bit of storage inside of the hearth. That's going to be a lip hanging out. We left cover enough this space at the board, top to accommodate on the to hardy backer and then the, the height plates. of a capstone as well. Once the hearth is all built out, now we need to attach hardy backer to the framing of this as well. This is the same quarter inch hardy backer that we applied to the face of the fireplace wall. The hardy backer cuts really easily just using a utility knife. You can score it and then it will just break at the score. Sean just measured out the angles of the hearth and then cut it using a utility knife. You're going to repeat the same process on this hardy backer as we did up the wall and tape and mud the seams. I do want to add one piece of advice. You're going to want to make sure that you don't have any cats trapped inside your hearth before you close it up. Mine liked to explore this while we were building. You see those eyes in there? Well, hello there. We did make sure they were out before we closed it in. Let's talk a little bit about the process for picking a capstone. We went to a local stone yard that had plenty of options. It was a little bit overwhelming looking at all the aisles of stone when we first got there. We did talk to some staff to get some advice on what materials would be good for using on a hearth. At first we were looking at a man-made stone, which is a composite material that's basically cast from concrete. And the staff recommended that we didn't use that on a fireplace hearth because if we ever drop anything on it and crack a piece or chip it, it's going to show us the concrete color inside the stained concrete. So we knew that we wanted to use a natural stone and started looking at those. There weren't quite as many options in the natural stone, um, so we had to look through it a little bit more. We took a piece of the stone that we used on the face of the fireplace to try to match and pull colors from there and we found this beautiful sandstone that was perfect. 
There was a lot of variation in the colors of the stone yard, so we just had to pick through the crate and find um, four pieces that we liked the best. We chose the four that we could find that were the most uniform in color and had the fewest unique markings so that they were very uniform on the face of it. We marked the stone pieces much like marking the hardy backer to cut it, only these were much different to cut. We did end up using the same tile saw again. These pieces are about an inch thick of natural stone, but the sandstone cuts fairly easily. Different stones can be different hardnesses. Each of these pieces of stone was about $17. This was on the cheaper end of the hearthstones. Some of them were up to in the $60 to $80 range for some really nice pieces of stone. This made Sean extremely nervous to cut them because we only brought four pieces home. We could have brought home an extra one, but he was confident that he could get the cuts right on the first try. Of the four pieces that we brought home, three of them required cuts. We attached the hearthstones using the same mortar that we used to attach the tile up the wall. The most complex cut on this part was for the kindling box, and that ended up just being three pieces that we patched together on the frame. We do plan to eventually line the kindling box with a sheet metal, but haven't quite gotten to that part. I will say it's a really nice feature to have, though. So here's our finished fireplace wall. From drywall for, for two years to this beautiful stone feature, it really warmed up the room and added a lot of height that draws your eyes up to the tall ceilings. Aside from the color, I love the kindling box. That is a super functional feature, and I also love how the shape ended up working with our built-in cabinetry. If you enjoyed this video, click that subscribe button. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube.